So, um, as you all know, we are here at the Bureau of Workers Comp uh, Garfield office, and uh, they have been a wonderful collaborative partner with us on this initiative. Um, happy to introduce Brian Chambers, who we work with closely on ergonomics at all of our facilities. Brian has been very helpful in um, getting us to solve some um, ergon ergonomic uh, uh, situations. But he is going to talk this morning about the wonderful safety grant opportunity that all of you have available to you. I'm going to turn it over to him. Thank you, Noel. Again, uh, Brian from Workers' Comp. So we have a preventive branch of the Bureau. So for the, those of you that are from separate companies, our services are all paid for and it's included in your premiums. So besides ergonomists who can come out and kind of help you make process changes, we also have industrial hygienists can, they can do noise surveys, take a look at emissions or any, any chemical issues you might deal with, as well as general safety consultants. We are consultative only, so we can give you some information, give you some suggestions on improvements or, or ideas for you. It's up to you what to do with the information. One other plug is we do have a great research library. If you call 1-800-OHIO-BWC, play the phone tag in so you get into our uh, safety and hygiene department and our librarians. They have access to different search engines that you normally can't get out off of Google or, or wherever else you're trying. So if you have any topic, any idea, it could be aging workforce, could be some of the topics we're, we're talking about today, they can pull up studies and they're gonna email to you that day. They're, they're phenomenal, they're underused, a lot of people don't know about them. So I'm an ergonomist, so there's 22 of us throughout the state, and we basically try to make sure that and this is kind of the best summary of ergonomics, that your workforce, the people that are doing work, aren't being asked to do more than their body's capable, right? So the best way to do that is what? Take a look at what the issues are, what kind of lifting, and believe it or not, the industry that you guys are in is one of the worst, you know, people think, oh, when it comes to ergonomics, probably what, construction's the worst? But when, really, when you look at it, when you're asked to shift and move, some people have very little capability as far as contributing to that move, and you're asked to do it while bent over, using extended postures, that's about the worst you can have on your back, right? We know, we know lifting something off the floor is bad or above the shoulders, but as soon as you start bending over and then reaching, that's, that's right up there as far as high risk. Other ball injuries is what? The back injuries, right? There's two types of back injuries. You get a muscle pull. It takes about, what, 10 days to heal. And the one that's worse is if the cumulative trauma, trauma one, we've all got those little discs in our back, right? 90% water. They're very susceptible to shifting. You, there's, no, there's no sensors in there. So if you hurt yourself in that area where the discs are, you're not gonna know, you're not gonna know it. And you all know when you're doing what a transfer, you can do some twisting. You're, you're putting some side loads on it, so it's a lot easier for those things to shift. Once it, once they shift and they start hitting, you know, you, you, some of the nerves and everything else that's attached to the spinal cord, it's a severe injury. It's a, it's a life-changing injury. A lot of times in the in the field that you guys are at, you're more concerned about the people, the caregivers, the people you're caring for. But a lot of times you don't think about yourself. You don't think about your employees that are doing that kind of work. So the idea here today is, from an ergonomic standpoint, this is how you deal with those issues. You want to go with the highest level. In other words, if you just put a back brace on, what are the problems with back braces? You might think you're Superman, so you're going to probably try and lift maybe more than you can, or, or really need to, or it's also going to shift the strain onto the weaker abdominal muscles with those things. Other controls you can do to try and handle how you're going to do, how you're going to try and mitigate some of the uh, exposure with the lifting. You might say, "Oh, we're just we know the second floor has the people that are the least capable as far as contributing to the transfer, so we're going to rotate employees in and out there." Well, you still have the exposure, and we know that in the in this type of work, the first you know the chance of people hurt. How many people have hurt their back? It's it, again, it's like when the hands went up earlier. So once you do hurt your back, it's a lot easier to hurt it the second time or the third time. And you don't want that life-changing event 
where now you're going to have a problem the whole rest of your life. So the best way to deal with it is engineering out it out. So we brought in a bunch of vendors today. We're not um, endorsing these vendors. We just wanted to bring in a cross section of different types of devices so you can kind of get the idea what's out there, what can I bring in to help, again, engineer out that exposure, that risk. We do have some programs to help pay for it. If you, if you work with disabled, we have a five to one matching program. If you're just uh, any, any, you know, maybe home health or where you're going out to just people that may not be disabled but you're doing a lot of lifting, we have a safety grants program, three to one matching. And that's, again, in other words, um, if it's $10,000 for the equipment that you want to get, we'll pay $7,500, you pay the rest. So as long as you're you know, state funded, paying to the system employee, we can help you out with these programs. There's uh, better information on these programs left of the coffee pot when you get a break. It's got the uh, details of those two programs, but please, a lot of people don't realize it. We've had these programs out there for 10 to 15 years. We know the return on investment is over three to one. So any money that comes out of the state fund, we know we're getting back in injury prevention. So just to be clear, your private nonprofit agencies are not open for that, correct? No, no, the state agencies are, you know, like Summit County, Cuyahoga County, yes, they're still eligible for the safety grant as well as the disability program. Disability program, if you're dealing with people with disabilities, five to one matching, the regular safety grant program, yes, you're eligible. As long as you're not self-insured. So, Yes. If you're paying into workers' compensation. Correct. If you're paying premiums, as long as you're not self-insured, basically. So again, three to, three to one on their safety grant program. If, you, if it's the, working with disabled, it's five to one. So what we're going to do is kind of hand it over to the uh, to the vendors here. So we're going to have them kind of come up. Um, if you want a better view, please feel free to just stand up. Uh, you, you know. If, and kind of get a view where you can see everything if there's something up closer, if you, even if you want to come off to the side to get a better view, uh, feel free to do what you can to, to see everything. All right, Brian? Yes. Do you have anyone in the Bureau that can help write grants? Usually you have to contact us to, to get the grant uh, processed, and we're so, we know what they're looking for on the review committee, so absolutely. Um, I'll, put, I'll put some information up later. Um, or get some cards, you can always email or contact me. If you want to write down my phone number, it's 216-308-5500. Uh, Email's probably best, I'll give you that real quick. Brian, B-R-I-A-N, dot C, dot one. And then it's at BWC, dot ST, ate dot oh dot us so again if you email or, or leave a message on my phone because i'm out in the field a lot i'll get back to you we'll find out who the best ergonomist is based on your zip code they can come out they'll help you through the process and um, everyone kind of does it different on how they help the companies out but a lot of times i am doing a lot of the writing of the grants because it's easier sometimes we just sit down and just go through it and between the two of us Put down the information they're looking for for it, so for it to get approved. Okay, well, again, we're just going to start going through all the different vendors and equipment, and kind of take it from there. Once they're all done and we break for lunch, they're going to be they're going to hang around through the lunch period. So again, please engage them, ask them questions, find out about the uh, you know the different capabilities, etc. This equipment. Ready to go? Uh, who wants to lead off? We we got Hoverman over here. Um, you, you want to move it closer to the center of the room? Uh, right Everybody see me okay? No. No? Okay. Uh, well, I'll help you move it if you want. Let me drag this thing out here first. Okay. Uh, Hover Math is uh, air assisted patient movement devices. We have a variety of, of products to use. <laughs> And um, the one I'm going to demonstrate kind of includes both of our major products. Uh, it's called Hover Jack. Hover Jack is designed to lift the patient safely up off the floor if they have fallen in less than one minute. It will lift up to 1,200 pounds. 
So there's no, nobody that you should run into so far that you cannot safely lift up off the, off the ground should they um, fall. Uh, combined with a hover jack, you need a hover mat. A hover mat is, is this, the, is this thing on? Yeah. Oh, okay. A uh, uh, hover mat uh, also uh, is an air assisted product. It works kind of like an upside down air hockey table in that there are thousands of tiny holes on the underside that air is pumped through at pressure, creating an air cushion that that patient rides on. It reduces your drag coefficient by around 90%, so you're only moving about 10% of that patient's body weight in terms of the physical force required to move them from one surface to another. It can also be used uh, in a bed uh, for a patient who it, it lacks mobility so that it can be used for repositioning the patient in the bed, for turning them laterally on their side, besides doing a uh, lateral transfer onto another surface. So once you get the patient up off the floor on the hover jack, you need a way of moving them off the hover jack onto uh, a bed or stretcher. And so that's where the hover mat comes into play. So we always place the patient first on the hover mat, then on top of the hover jack, uh, and then that way we can get them safely somewhere else. Do I have anybody who would like to lay down on the job and get paid for it? I have a volunteer. Excellent. Okay, if you would be so kind as to just have your feet at that end and your head up at this end. Yep. Now, now most patients don't um, don't fall right on top of the whole equipment uh, at the time, so uh, we'll have to. Uh, normally, you would either log roll them on, or and you would learn all that how to do that if you purchase the equipment, because we will come out and train everybody on, on how to use it safely. Um, we're gonna make sure that our volunteer here, what's your name? Ricky. Ricky, okay. Uh, that Ricky does not fall off. So we're gonna buckle you in. Now, the mattress is composed of four inflatable sections. You start at the bottom right and, and move up to each section to the top left in sequence. As I said, it takes about one minute to inflate all four sections. They are, once inflated, those sections are sufficiently hard enough that you, uh, it's classified to be able to do compression. So if a patient goes into cardiac arrest, you can do compressions on an inflated hover jack. So. I'm simply going to turn the air supply on and I'm going to hold it. There's a one way valve here that I'm going to hold it on, and you'll hear an audible change in the pitch of the motor uh, once it's inflated, and then we'll go ahead and move it to the next chamber. Location, you, you can. Um, it has lots of pull handles on it. Uh, carpeting is always like the worst to move on, <laughs> but most of the time, you, you know, you hard hard floors, it, it slides uh, quite quite nicely. Um, the hover mat, I'll just inflate briefly. Thank you. Um, there's a pocket on either um, side of the bottom of the hover mat. Just slip the air hose in 
and um, I have to loosen this strap here, otherwise I'd strangle you. Okay. <laughs> but don't, don't go anywhere, okay? Okay. <laughs> In the hose into the that's the end the hose into the into the port. Okay. Now let's try. The hover mat will the hover mat will stay in place as long as the air supply is on, but it makes it really easy to move the okay. I'm gonna turn this off so we don't lose it. As soon as you turn the air supply off, the mat will deflate and uh, that way uh, you can then um, be assured that um, they'll stay where you have them. <laughs> uh, any questions on this on this product right at the moment? Why? Where would you use this? Would, where yeah. would you use this? Yeah. Okay. This can be used in any location where a patient can fall. So it can be in a bathroom. It can be in a hallway. It can be in a parking lot. Wherever you have a pa someone who has fallen and you need to get them up. Oh who are not able to assist in their movements anymore for whatever reason, uh, that you can then take, take the hover jack out there as long as you have uh, an air uh, electrical connection. <laughs> we do make a battery chart, battery cart that allows it to be more mobile so it, is, it relies on a battery to inflate, to operate the uh, air supply and, and you can use that in basically anywhere. So the sole purpose of that? The sole purpose of this is to lift patients off the floor or off, off some surface uh, up to stretcher height so that you can then laterally transfer them onto a stretcher for taking to imaging or an ambulance comes and takes them away, whatever you need for that. Okay. All right. Ricky? Yes. You can, you're free to get up now. All right. I know you're really comfortable, but I was. <laughs> As you can see, this is, this is very hard, right? Round of applause for our volunteers. Now, the other, the other product I want to mention briefly is called LiftSeat. LiftSeat is a powered toileting system that allows a patient to be take from a stand position down to a full seated position uh, and then back up again. And as it brings that patient up, it's going to uh, bring the patient's it tilts forward so that it transfers the weight onto the patient's leg so they basically can just lean forward like this and then grab their walker <laughs> or, or whatever assistive device they might need uh, to then move away from the toilet. Um, this is an in-home product. Uh, it's uh, currently available uh, on the VA contract. If there are any patients who are uh, veterans, they can get it through their, uh, the VA. Uh, or um, we can, can purchase it directly from the company. Uh, this can be a bedside commode. You can make it into a commode bucket or you can put it over an existing toilet. Uh, it operates simply by a pendant. We have, it, is, it plugs in on an AC outlet. Uh, you can get a battery backup for it in case there's a power failure, which we'd usually recommend. But if, uh, once the patient sits on it, it just slowly takes them down, allows them to, and for, for patients who have even uh, physical therapy, and you know, occupational <coughs> therapists will sometimes use this to help train people to, to be able to get on and off more efficiently on their own by leaving it at different heights so that they have more of the work to do. But once, once they're done, all they have to do is then press the button again. And it's a, it's, it has height adjustments to it. Now, if you have someone who's short of leg, sometimes they'll slide forward a little bit uh, to get, keep their feet on the ground. But as you can see, my weight now is, is, is on my legs so that I don't need to use arm pressure. I don't need to lift. I don't need to use abdominal strength. All I have to do is lean forward. So um, any questions on, on this? Yes? A question about the Sure. Um, I notice as each layer 
inflated. Filled up, inflated. Yes. I felt the pressure on my back. Uh -huh. um, if I had a back injury, how would I know? I mean, is there any way to tell that this will create more pain? Um, or in that case, you just you're not concerned about that. You just want to get them. Well, um, you're going to have to get them up. It's better to get them up in a supine position than it is bent. Okay. Uh, you can use this with a backboard. If you have suspicion that there's a neck or, or injury or something like that and you want to put them on a backboard first, that's fine. Then you can put the backboard on, on that and then lift them up. The, the purpose of this equipment is to keep you from hurting yourself, getting that patient off the floor and not possibly then hurting the patient more because you, you start to fall and then they fall again. That's not a. That's not something you want to have happen. Yeah, I like the way it lifts them up flat. It doesn't bend in the way. It's, it's a broken hip. It's not going to hurt if I bend the hip. I like that. Yeah. If, yeah. If, by keeping them supine and firm, you're you're not going to aggravate uh, any breaks or things like that. So. Okay. Thank you very much. You're more than welcome to come by during the noon break and we'll discuss in more detail. You guys ready to go over here? setting up do you want to go next sure okay mine will be fast especially for, uh, for a lot of uh, applications to give me a look that Don Brown the inventor is going to tell you about and as you can see it's very portable I might need somebody to lift up here okay all right I've had this invention uh, for the past 16 a little louder oh I've had this invention for the past 16. I'm off, right? That's all right. I can talk loud enough, all right? So I've had this. I've invented this uh, almost 20 years ago uh, when I had a laparoscopic uh, surgery uh, for my gallbladder. And uh, when I got up at home, I had a hernia from getting up for the first time off the bed with nothing to hold on to. And. Uh, I still, I, I was going to get the mesh, but when I found out the mesh was only a 50% shot, my doctor told me of lasting, I didn't get it. And after reading everything about mesh sometimes, now I'm glad I didn't get the mesh. Uh, so I survived that. But I then worked on the lift and uh, actually patented it. I received patents on it. And the patent office says, well, it's one of the First, we haven't had an original invention in a long time, but usually add-on inventions, you know, of things. So, and then they awarded me also a uh, invention for methods of how it's used. So I have two patents on this product from the government, the United States and Canada. I also have a patent. So I, I've been selling it to, I started off selling it to uh, nursing homes and, and individuals that needed help that just got out of the hospitals and need, needed to rehab. And uh, they put an article in the main paper of the Akron Beacon Journal when I lived in Akron and uh, with other inventors. So it worked out well and got me started. Uh, I really never have advertised it a lot, all right? But I put some up in Kaiser Permanente in Cleveland uh, a few years back. And all of a sudden they're calling me from Oregon, Portland, all the cities in the state of Oregon. And they've been ordering from me since 2009, every year for different departments. Because, and the person that I get the orders from, is just takes orders from the nurses and so on. But every one of them says, our nurses really love your lift. And so it made me proud, you know, to hear that. And uh, so 
So I then Providence, which is a big hospital also up in that area, found out about Kaiser using that. So Providence, it, and it's about the third largest hospital now in the country, they buy out everybody. Uh, they, they've been using it now for about three years. And uh, so it's, it's proven, is what I'm saying to you. And so it's not a gimmick or anything. It truly works with the mechanical advantage of leverage. And the mechanical advantage of leverage is a physics law. And so it's like if you have a teeter-totter, and I would uh, actually, we'll say that this is the teeter-totter, and two people are teeter-tottering. But you've got one person that is heavier than the other, all right? So the lighter person, and this is, let's say, instead of the bar being in the middle of the teeter-totter, they move the bar over to another part of the teeter-totter, so one has more length than the other. Well, the heavier person is at the shorter end, the, short, the lesser weight person uh, is at the long end, so it equals out their weight so they can teeter-totter. I don't know if you've ever done that or not, but there were notches on the old teeter-totter boards, and it actually works. That's called the mechanical advantage of leverage. Well, that's vertical. That is a horizontal thing. It also works, believe it or not, vertically. And when I found that out, that's how I start putting it together. And there's a formula for it for my in my patent that shows mathematically how it works and so on and what ratio it is. Uh, my first ratio on it when we did the first lifts, uh, it was eight to one. So if if you uh, had uh, if you were 200 pounds it would be much less than that divided by eight uh, to lift somebody up with. So uh, that would be like 25 pounds of lift effort only to lift somebody up instead of lifting 200 pounds. And so I'm gonna demo it for you and show you really how easy it works. We, we have, uh, the model of it itself has just been, you're seeing something new that I've done recently and uh, we're, we're getting new patents on these, but basically this is a little stronger wider and uh, it has uh, instead of a uh, black uh, horse type sh shaft this is more a, uh, a gloss type and it has actual gloss on it it's UV v protected and uh, I worked with Pittsburgh plate glass up in their Cleveland office and uh, also out of Pittsburgh and they have come up with powder coating instead of paint now and so the powder coating is real strong. It's like you put on washers or dryers or cars in the back bumpers type of thing. It's very strong and durable. So this is powder coated uh, material on here. And the, the powder coating it actually has infused silver in it. Now, if you don't know, but silver works as an antimicrobial and can actually kill bacteria. So uh, in, in the ancient days, real quick history of the Phoenicians and the Egyptians, they used it to line their water vessels and to, to keep them uh, from the bacteria. Then they, but they went too far then. They went ahead and started putting them on their dishes and uh, the kings and so on, pharaohs, and uh, on their drinking cups and so on, and their silverware. Well, all of a sudden, the people that were the normal people in the group would see him talking up there, and they'd look at him and say, are their lips purple? Are, you, yeah, are blue? And so they'd start calling them blue bloods. And that's how the word term blue bloods came about, actually, way back when. And, and, but what happened, they were getting too much of the silver, and it turned their blood a little bit blue, but it didn't do any harm. And so the way they measure it, uh, with PPG, it's correct. And you're not gonna get blue, blue blooded lips, you know, using it. So I can give it to you that. So I'm going to show you here with Brian how it works simply, all right? One of these is with a strap in case it can work and lift somebody up with no arms on it. So, or weak arms. And that's why I have the strap. And it goes around the back. Or, and it, it can be used in a hospital where it's open. So it's not strapped like a, like a gate belt. is tight on you. Or it can be used as a gate belt, too. So it only weighs a couple of pounds, but it has I knew it on, it also has what's called platinum silicone grips and they're non-porous. So they won't absorb, these grips won't absorb any water or anything else and, and they're, they can be just hand wiped off with a towelette and uh, they've got texture even on them. And my grips you push down, you just don't, you just don't uh, grip them, you push down as the patient does on them. 
So they have to be where your hand doesn't slip and you can actually push down on these without slipping on it. So I'm gonna lift Brian up and show you how it works here. I'll use the other one without the strap. And there's a wall clip for the nurses. It's in this bag here that I have. It's an option if they want it. Most of them buy it. But they clip it onto the wall and it's just two screws and they have maintenance put them up. And they're about a foot off the floor in the hospital rooms. So they're kind of really accessible and a nurse doesn't have to go down to a, a hall closet to go and pull something out of Hoyer lip like they have to pull Hoyer lip up. It's right there, the patient calls. They walk in the room, if they need to go to the bathroom, get up, they get them right up. So that's why it's the nurse's friend. My new nurse lift is now called Nurse Lift. So that's why I named it to help them out. Because you know they get back injuries, right? So hold up, please. Oh, and by the way, one of the uh, hospitals up here uh, off of Detroit, uh, oh, nursing home up at Detroit Avenue, I put 50 of these in, one for every bed, all right? And that was two years ago. He wrote me a letter back, and Brian's seen it. And uh, they have had no back injuries or any types of lifting injuries with my leg. So it does more than set people up. It does a lot of things, and it helps them even walk when they're walking, rehabbing. So it's, it's simple, but it really works well. So now I'm gonna lift Brian up here now. Brian, would you put one foot on the anchor pad? We have an anchor pad on the bottom. As you can see, it's flat. And it hardwood, it works on vinyl floors, carpeting, and it has beveled edges around it. So when we first made it, it was a little too flexible and soft, all right? Uh, but then it, it actually, got suction to our floor and it, it it will lay flat even at an angle you see the neck bends so details I love details by the way all right so here we go with Brian now Brian is sitting up and he's I'm gonna have him sit on the edge of the bed with his uh, nose over his toes so to speak a nurse a nurse term all right so it's, he gets his nose about six inches away from this all right where the patient would be all right and all the patient has to do then is basically have their feet apart just like he's doing normal stance one foot in front of the other so when he gets up it's he's normally standing up he's got a good base of support is what it is all right so I'm gonna show Brian uh, I'm gonna do a normal lift with you I'm gonna do two lifts with him right so this would be normal I want you to just push down on the grips and as I come up you as you're pushing they'll straighten your back up right on three one two three stand up push down and stand up okay okay all right, now we're gonna try it again, and I'm gonna do it, Brian, sit, sit up uh, like this, all right? Now I'm gonna do it with two fingers. Now I've had hand surgery, carpal tunnel, everything else, so the nurses that have them, I've had them. I'm gonna use his hand to lift him up with two fingers. All right, so, see, now on three, and I want you to push down as you're coming up, and when you start to come up, push down and then straighten your back up, all right? Because I'm straightening my back up, I'm not bending over to lift him. One, two, three. It's that easy. There's so much, le this has more leverage, 10 to one, than my original one. So, so if Ryan's 200 pounds, I just lift, lift less than 20 pounds, but there's another technique that really brings it down even to lower than that. I mean, it was so simple. It's like lifting a couple of pounds, and it only weighs a couple of pounds. So that's just a little bit about it that I wanted to show you, and so you'd understand that there's a pretty good product that's really successful out there, proven on the market. Uh, yeah, it's uh, around two hundred dollars, and if they want the strap, it's thirty-five. And I'm I'm making a strap that is non-magnetic because MRIs wanted me to make make it. And this is this is non-magnetic too. This is a real top quality aluminum inside with a special uh, uh, Mercedes Benz like V shaped in it to make it strong. So that uh, if you didn't hear that. Uh, but it's, the, the shaft is uh, specially made, and it has a, a test before it bends. My old shaft, which was thinner, the test was 642 pounds before it bent. So it's really strong. And uh, it's lightweight, though. Any other questions? Uh, what's it called? It's called uh, Give Me a Lift. It's Give Me a Lift. If you go to Give Me a Lift. G-I-M-M-E space A space lift. Yeah, I, I left some cards on the desk. 
and you can go to my website and you can see videos of the nurses actually using it and we use that for partial training the video for nurses and hospitals and stuff so we've and seen a lot of physical therapists use this in rehabilitation and again there is uh, directions that Don gives out as far as someone using it themselves. Yeah, it's, it's pretty to maintain simple. It's a two-sided trifold, and but it's detailed and, and highlighted for special things where to put your feet and stuff. You know. So if you get a chance during the break to try both ends, he's being lifted, and you can feel yeah, how easy yeah, it pops yeah. you up, and also how easy it is just to rock back. That's a good suggestion. Uh, right. And Kaiser now has asked me uh, about a year ago if they could use my methods uh, that are patented. For their nurses training for all of their places so they're using it all the time okay moving right along hi everyone my name's carrie marsh from a place called motion mobility to design down in north canton and what we have right here is has everyone seen ceiling mounted lift systems have them maybe in group homes or your work settings um, this here is a portable system that could be very easily taken down, packaged in the bags that it comes in, and somebody could take it from hotel rooms. Uh, it's very lightweight, all aluminum, but it would also help to replicate, if you hadn't seen the ceiling lifts, uh, the fact that a track similar to this would just be mounted in a ceiling, and with the same type of motor and slings would be your uh, device you could use to help somebody uh, get lifted uh, as a, a solution maybe to avoid or lift problems or something else that you see in their home. So they, they, this particular lift here would lift somebody up to 440 pounds and then there's greater weight capacity ones too. There's obviously quite a variety of slings that somebody could use. Uh, what's nice about generally the slings that would be with the lift systems is you, you wouldn't have to sit on them all day long if they're in their wheelchair. They would be able to have those easily removed out from underneath them so that the uh, sling is not sitting on top of their cushioning uh, positioning components that maybe they have in their wheelchair. So uh, it doesn't deflect any of the softness of maybe what their seat is. Um, Curtis, you want to come up? We'll just, I'll lift you. I'll just talk loud here. That's exactly right. That's a that's a big help to having something like this. If they're renting and maybe the landlord's not fond of somebody having the ceiling uh, system some mounted. The, some of the day programs have like drop tiles that yep. they say they can't add on, so maybe something like that. Sure. Obviously, um, uh, somebody from our place would come out and inspect the property to see just what's necessary. But boy, just the ease of the portability with something like this for somebody that would travel, you wouldn't want to go somewhere and have to worry about how you're going to handle the lifting, um, makes it a lot easier. So the, it's, they're like U-shaped, and again, there's a variety of these, but they're U-shaped and these longer bottom pieces just go up and underneath somebody's legs. And then this primarily, the backside just goes all the way down and just a little bit like a belt line to help lift somebody. So they could do toileting, obviously, everything underneath here without having to maybe fine-tune a hole in a cut and a full type of sling that maybe a Hoyer lift would have. Just uh, helping the client to lift their leg up underneath here. Try and get as many wrinkles out of there as you can. It's a pneumatic hand control, so you know, we probably most often do a setup of a ceiling lift system. Would probably be like a, maybe an eight foot piece over their bed, uh, and then maybe an eight foot piece of track in the bathroom. And then they could handle uh, a bathing actually in the bathtub, obviously the toileting, 
and then get lifted uh, in and out of bed, wheelchair and that, transfers and that too. But it's pneumatic hand control that just, let me switch it back a little bit here. A little bit more. Uh, it's pneumatic so that if you're in the bathroom using it, you drop it or whatever, it's nothing more than just an air pressure switch. They also have, um, say something happens to the hand control and the hand control's not working, there's buttons right on the lift itself to do the lifting. There's color coded. Um, oh, oh, thanks. Uh, color coded. Uh, uh, the straps are color coded, which you try to do each one of them on the same. You would have to do each one of them on the same color. The length of the straps would change kind of the pitch of the sling. So if somebody's got a pretty fixed open hip angle or whatever, they need to be a little more reclined when they're lifted. Um, all that could be accounted for within the straps. And the, and the leg straps, you can, uh, um, usually we crisscross them to help kind of pull somebody more in a regular sitting position if you, kept everything on the same top side, it tends to spread the legs open, which maybe is better for a toileting situation or maybe somebody's body's uh, orthopedically set up. Just, it's real easy to just kind of roll it along on the track, sealing one just the same, to put it to the next sitting surface and then you lower them down. So again, there's a variety of slings, our, our kind of our True sales guys for this at our place have come out and really do a lot of assessing of what the patient is, what they can and can't do. Uh, in most cases, uh, you know, this is the most common kind of universal type of sling that has a head support to it. So it's very lightweight lift. Uh, it's battery operated, so you're charging it up. Yes. I have a question for you. On that black strap that comes down. Yeah. And, uh, is that polypropylene or nylon? What is that? Uh, you know the exact material yeah, that I'm not sure. Well, yeah. one of them UV protected. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Nylon, the subtly. <laughs> but what is the weight? Uh, yes. Yeah, so limit on that. 440. 440. 440 yeah. pounds. Yeah. Right. Yep. Uh, but you know this particular says be height adjustable. You put it where you, you put it as high as somebody needed it to go for what they needed. We're more probably just trying to bring this because we could get it here to show you what the ceiling lift system, which we had done previously quite a bit through workers' comp grants and Ohio waiver programs, things like that, are our primary funding sources for those. Any other general questions? We can certainly talk more specifically individually with it. Uh, anything else?
This is the uh, Rift and Tram system. It's, uh, you can pick someone up from a seated position, lift them up, and move them around wherever you need to go fairly easily. Um, it uh, can also work as a gate trainer for people. Uh, there's a system where it will uh, just stand someone up and then they can walk and you can uh, kind of support them and use that. But um, it, uh, we'll just get uh, Carrie loaded up here. Legs will uh, spread open so you can get up close to them. Just want to bring it up to the person. You want to get it a little bit above the belt but not clear up all the way. There's a uh, clipping system here in the back and uh, it's all adjustable. So we clip this in and kind of pull the belt and snug it up to them. Then you have these uh, uh, slings right here, put it underneath your legs, flip it on, once you get that onto the person you want to kind of come around behind them. Take the straps and snug that up to them also. Oops. You want to make sure that stays on there. So then once you got them all strapped in, what you want to do, and, uh, there's a little on and off switch right, or I mean up and down switch. So then you just start lifting them up. You lift the person up. And then you can just move them more around wherever you'd like to, like to do that. So 350 pound weight capacity, we've had times where people really, they weren't even that close to the weight capacity, but just had a little more size to them in their hips and that where we've added like a third strap that maybe would help to kind of give them a yeah, little bit it, more of a boost to get. If you notice a person's kinda. hips are hanging down there, you just take another strap, put it underneath them and connect it to the sides and snug it up to, to lift their hips up out of there. The throw, I mean, there's, you feel real secure in that in there. There's, there's, there's no way you're going anywhere. So they call it a tram because it's a transferring and mobility device. So it could also have like a, like a seat sling to it that would uh, not use the leg straps then at all. And it would be able to, the way the sling would work, it could be able to get you up and weight bearing and somebody could help you to try to start getting some steps. So it's a little bit more like a, you know, something maybe a facility would use in a therapy room or that. Places like Edwin Shaw has them. Uh, that's another, that's why it's called the tram. It also helps with mobility. Any questions about that? That'd be a great thing to sit in and try real easy and just use in any chairs somewhere here. Great. Ohio, one of our uh, dealer providers in, in the Cleveland area to 
kind of show you guys a few different floor lift devices along with the standing frame, a passive uh, standing device. So I have Joe Fawcett here. He manages the um, home access department. Is that the right name for your department? Yes. At Health Aid. What I have here is a, a Sarah Steady. Um, this is a, a transfer aid for your more moderately um, involved clients. For your, for your clientele that can actually assist in pulling themselves up, this might be a nice bathroom uh, solution for them. So I'm going to demonstrate with Joe. I'm going to bring this device right up to him. I'm going to block his knees with the uh, knee block that's there. I'm going to encourage him to grab onto the lift bar and sort of pull himself up. I'm going to, as the caregiver, close that gate. Go ahead and have a seat. I've encouraged Joe to participate in his transfer, so he's gotten some weight bearing. I can then take this device from the wheelchair and move it over a commode or over a shower chair and reverse the transfer back the other way. So you can see it's a very simple device. There's no batteries to charge. Um, it's pretty well built. Um, can be used in the bathroom. Not necessarily in the shower, we still want to use the shower chair, but kind of, a, kind of a nice solution again for that less involved client that has mobility limitations that don't allow them to stand on their own. Um, moving into a powered device, um, many of you may be seeing the Saris uh, 3000. Uh, this is a similar sit and stand configuration uh, that we're going to use with kind of a corset sling. Uh, we'll bring this around Joe and Joe's going <coughs> to. surface like a carpeted surface or not padded surfaces or a padded surface of some kind it's going to be easier to roll this device because the weight is more balanced um, over, the, over the device itself. We can do some weight bearing we can get Joe up a little bit taller if we want to if he's got the range to allow for it and if he's got the tolerance we could do some some standing therapy with this particular device. So um, all the equipment I'm showing you today has about a 440 pound weight capacity somewhere in that area. that are more dependent. Um, 
maybe not able to stand, maybe not able to help participate in their own transfer, we can go to a uh, full, full power, um, I like to use the term floor lift. Um, a more common name is to call it a Hoyer. Hoyer is reference to a specific brand, so we're trying to keep the language more consistent. When we talk about floor lifts, it's a lift that rolls on the floor as opposed to an overhead lift. Um, in this case, we're using a split leg clip style sling. And just like with Carrie's demonstration, we talked about getting the, this top of the U right around the safe room when we're, when we're trying to position the sling onto the client. We really don't want to have our clients sitting on slings all day. So we want to make the sling as easy as possible to apply. Um, in this case, I'm using the uh, what Arjo calls their dynamic positioning system with a four-point clip sling, and I'll show you guys the benefits of that here in a second. You know, a lot of people ask about you know the, the basic. Uh, floor lifts that are available through your Medicare and Medicaid benefits. They're typically um, a hydraulic lift where instead of hitting a button to raise up, you've got to be close to the mast of the lift to sort of pump that up. So it takes, involves a little bit of work. Then to raise and lower and manage your client, you've also still got to be close to that mast to release the valve and, and make and handle your controls in addition to managing your client. So when you get into something that's more of a powered floor lift, you'll see that it's just a little bit more practical for a single person to be able to use the device. And I've never done this with this many people watching me. <laughs> Hopefully I don't drop Joe. So I can then go ahead and lift Joe up out of his chair. I like to leave my um, casters unlocked on the lift itself. I don't know if you guys just noticed, but as I started to raise Joe up, the lift centered around him, as opposed to my adversely pulling him out of his position. Um, I, it's, if you read the owner's manuals, they'll tell you to lock the casters. I prefer to leave the casters unlocked when I'm transferring up to the loft back. Is it a scale attachment? For a couple hundred extra bucks, we can do that. <laughs> <laughs> Same thing with the Sarah lift, incidentally. We can put a scale on this as well. So with this dynamic positioning system, you can see Joe's kind of upright, but maybe we're going to a bed or changing table. I can then manage his position with this bar. Um, we do offer lifts that also make this component power, so I can uh, kind of tilt my client by power if that's a little bit too much or if the client's you know, a lot larger than, than the caregiver is, but you can see how we can change our angle depending on the type of uh, transfer we're doing. Or you know, maybe the client has low tone or low head control and so we really need to keep them tilted back uh, into the sling as much as possible. So, um, But Joe needs to do a standing therapy, so I'm gonna use the lift and put Joe into his easy stand. In this case, I've got an easy stand with a swingway front, which I'm going to use to kind of open it up and I can help position. Uh, to do a floor lift into an easy stand, I'm going to lift Joe from his chair so he's facing the mast of the lift, but then I'm going to turn it away so that we're facing away from the mast. And then I'm going to bring the lift over, put my armrest up out of the way. I could have done a better job of getting him onto the seat, but for time's sake, I'm just uh, going to get this out of the way. I 
I will also say we can build this lift with a traditional two-point um, carry bar that, where you can use a loop style sling like what Carrie demonstrated with there. Um, I'm going to, again, because I don't have the standard adjustable, I'm just going to ask Joe to go ahead and scoot himself back. There's some armrests for you right there. Adjusted. Now the easy stand is a, it's not a transfer aid of any kind, but it's a therapeutic standard. So if your clients that could benefit from weight bearing, maybe to um, just help with improved range of motion, um, maybe more normalized bowel and bladder function, maybe to build strength for gait training, maintain range for gait training or just because they want to stand up just like everybody else. If Joe was able to, he could grab onto that handle, pump himself up into a standing position. We do have other secondary supports that would help hold a person back into the seat. And I've got some laterals I can show you. standing position. Um, a device like this can work for even your most severely involved clients to get them up in weight bearing. And with the right kind of transfer device, because transferring into an easy stand is the challenge. So with the right kind of transfer device and the right kind of way to do it, we can get people up and doing weight bearing therapy with an easy stand. Is that going to tilt at all to help position for a person? Uh, the easy stand? Yeah. Uh, no, this one doesn't. We do have um, smaller versions, pediatric versions, where we can create a recliner or tilt to, to get them in better. But, but we can open up the back angle a little bit more than what we did. Um, ideally, with Joe, I would have grown the seat depth a little bit longer. I didn't. Um, he's taller than I anticipated. So I could have gotten a little bit better position there. So floor lifts are all a little bit different in how you might approach the easy stand. And that's why when we are looking at, when we evaluate for the standard, we're kind of looking at what transfer device you have and kind of configuring the standard so that it best works with the lift and what lift that you have. And overhead is the easiest thing. A lot of users, clients that are potential easy stand users are going to have something sophisticated already. Powered lift is always nice because you can hold that control while you position somebody in, into the seat. So I'll be honest, I haven't often used that four point um, positioner for an easy stand. I've done it a couple times, but normally it's a two-point carry bar, and there's a few. It's a little bit less material in your in the client's face. Yeah. Any other questions on that stuff? So, for anything that you, you've seen, um, Health Aid of Ohio. Um, if you reach out to them, uh, I make sure that they have what they need to do demos with your clients. So, if you're in a uh, facility or a home and you need to show the staff to, to get to get their impression of what you know what you want to do and make sure that it's going to work for them. We all kind of work together as a team to make sure that happens. So um, just to let you guys know, everything I've shown you is available for trial uh, in that environment. So, all right, thanks you guys. Do you need a microphone? You got a safety grant program from CWC. I've got some campers now over on the red table with the red clock, as well as my card. So if you want information on how to get going on those four games, again, either a three to one, Seventy-five percent from us, or five to one, which is over eighty-three percent from us. Okay. Hi there. So I'm Lisa Nemec. I'm an ATP over at Health Aid of Ohio. We are a full-line family company. We're local. We're here in Parma, um, and I have Joe Fawcett here with me. He uh, runs our access department. So um, we we have respiratory, wound care, but really what I focus on is the mobility. Um, and equipment, seating and mobility with wheelchairs, and your basic DND, your wheelchairs, walkers, hospital beds. Um, we do the traditional foyer list through um, insurances. Um, I today brought specifically just a um, more of a rehab version shower chair. We use lots of different handy factors. We have a more of an adult size for this as well. Um, but it's pretty popular for your clients who need a little bit more support than your standard shower chair that insurance typically would cover. Um, this allows us to have the rolling base, and um, we have features on here for clients who need more support, like the lateral support. Um, on this particular 
particular model, we can do that swing away that they can adjust in and out. Uh, we have a headrest option for this as well. We have hip supports. Uh, we have the foot plate um, to support their lower extremities. We can do different cutouts for the seat. Um, we have more of a pummel or an abductor here to kind of help with positioning um, in the shower chair, or in the shower. This also is kind of a two-in-one, so you can use this in the shower and also over the toilet, or there's a separate commode pan that you can use um, to not put over the toilet. Um, this has two features on here, so you can recline it a little bit, as well as tilt. Thank you. 